Okay, I'm back, and I'm going to continue with my upgrade. I just rebooted, and so here we go. I'm continue with my droid because it's going to uh, probably going to in install some um, or replace some software that the video camera depends on. So also, um, if I have any problems with the camera after the upgrade, I will um, go ahead and try to solve that. But today is the day that the new Ubuntu upgrade is out, so I'm going to jump on board and go bleeding in. I put my soft, my password in there, and it's doing this routine here. <laughs> I wonder if there's going to be a lot of traffic today. Hopefully not. It's Sunday. And it's going to say it's going to remove some packages that aren't... There's going to be some packages removed that aren't supported. That aren't... Uh, they're just removed for whatever reason. Aha. Uh -huh. That driver right there, FGLRX, that is my video driver. So, um, that's my... Um, that's how I get my wobbly windows. And it's going to say I don't need live VLC. It must be. I'm going to get rid of VLC. I'm not sure. Maybe not. And a bunch of stuff are going to be upgraded. So I'm going to go ahead and start it. That said, in a warning message or whatever, it was going to take about an hour for this to do. And basically what happens is that uh, Ubuntu is set up with a program in, uh, underneath the hood called apt. And what that program does is um, basically download and install packages from the internet. But it could also install packages that you have already downloaded and maybe you've since uninstalled, but it's still in cache, and then you could doesn't have to download, you can just reinstall from there. So what, uh, so apt is part of the whole Debian package manager system, and that's that runs in the background of, of Ubuntu. And um, the, the way it works at the terminal, at least, because uh, the way it works underneath the hood is from the terminal, sorry, and what you do is you have to be you, know, you have to be super user, but most Ubuntu users use the sudo command. Type the um, command that requires administrative privileges, and then supply their password when asked. I have mine set up to not do it that way to just go ahead and use the super user. But um, basically, this is the way app works in general. I'm just going to do this right now because I got an hour, so why not? All you know, I'm going to do it the way most. A bunch of users would would use it. So, the steps to using apt is apt get update. Well, maybe I should start. <laughs> Actually, I should start a little bit earlier than that. Okay, to to get apt to work in the first place, first apt has to be installed, and um, apt comes as a base package with Ubuntu. If you haven't installed the Ubuntu system and you haven't done anything with it. Fresh out of the box, it'll have apt installed, and it'll have the next thing already set up for you already automatically. But I'm just going to go ahead and show you what it is. Okay, so like most Unix programs, the behavior of a program is controlled by the content of a text file, right? So I'm going to go, I'm just going to journey this way. And what I'm doing is right now I'm in my home directory, but I'm going to go up to the, the base of my partition that contains all these different uh, file, uh, f sorry, uh, directories, or some people will call them folders, and they, you know, they look like folders, right? In here, of course, just to show you that my home directory is within home and James. There's a whole bunch of other things, but basically the control panel is up here at etc. Uh, what I mean by control panel is the, the location where text files are that control the behavior of your uh, operating system or uh, applications that are installed within it. Now, um, to 
the program I'm talking about is apt. And so to control the behavior of apt, you would go into etc. apt, and the first thing you need to have is a source list. Uh, sources list, sorry, file. And in that sources list, I'll show you the content of that with um, gedit and why not. I can't edit it because I, you know, I have ministry privileges, but that's not my goal here. My goal right now is to just show you what's in there. Now, everything, what is very common to Unix is in, in any of these uh, configuration files, and even in shell scripts, which are just um, commands that are run from the command line, they're basically copied and pasted into a text file with a little pound sign, an exclamation point, and a slash bin slash slash sh at the top. Because um, <clears throat> if you have a pound sign in any line uh, in the shell script below that first line, or um, in any other kind of text file or configuration file when you're working with in Unix, if a pound sign over the left, it means ignore this column. This column. So I, <clears throat> my original install of Ubuntu, I believe, was probably 9.10. And so when I did the distribution upgrade, uh, Ubuntu automatically ap appended these um, pound signs in front and to the left of basically uh, the, the the location of the the uh, repositories on the internet um, at these locations. Right now. I'm set up the 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 um I guess the code name for Ubuntu 10.10 is is Maverick or something like that, and so that's right now it's going to be downloading and installing programs from this basic location, but it would this Maverick would probably be over to the left. There'd be a slash, and there'd be another slash, and another slash if it restricted. But this is the format that that the app file wants to have is. You have to say deb and then, <clears throat> you know, a basic location and then some things about what repositories you want to use from that location. But those uh, repository directories are all put on the server at, in this case, Ubuntu.com in a place that apt over here on my desk understands. And so when I type, when I go into the command line and show you the next step, when I type apt get upgrade or apt get install, It'll look in these locations for either a configuration file that says, okay, these are all the programs I have on this server that are available for you to install, and it'll download that list, or it will uh, retrieve, uh, and you'll type apt-get, say, Emacs, and then it, uh, apt on my local computer will look on that list that was downloaded from these locations and uh, try to find if Emacs is in there, now, if there's more than one named Emacs or we need to specify further, and if it just finds Emacs, it'll say, okay, um, these are the packages that are going to be installed. It installs Emacs on all, the, all of its dependencies that have been compiled. It says, this is what I'm going to install, and then once it downloads it, um, and it'll download, you say yes, it'll download and install it. That's basically what's happening, but this graphical user interface is the front end that Ubuntu has made for <clears throat> for apps. So apt is being used right now to install this. Now another thing that's happening is that uh, these GPG files <clears throat> are um, secure, unique security keys uh, that are made by the people that that uh, hold these. Uh, repositories on the internet for you so you can download applications that they've compiled for you and install on your system and these and since it's Ubuntu you can trust trust it because it's the company itself right and these but these uh, GPG files allow uh, you to know that you are actually getting those programs from Ubuntu and not from anywhere else because that's Ubuntu's unique signature <coughs> now the only thing that I ponder about is if uh, it doesn't seem to me to be very hard that someone that was trying to um, get around the system and do a man in the middle of the attack, I don't see why they couldn't save that trusted key themselves that, <laughs> that you have 
or the one that's downloaded while well, there's an install, you know, at some point save it and then send that to other people that are doing the man in the middle attacks. I'm not sure <clears throat> why that wouldn't be possible, but anyway, that's what it does. So anyway, so if you want to install something, you just go sudo, say I want to install the program likes, which is a word processor word processor that does some pretty nice formatting. I just go sudo apt get install and then I type the word lyx and it would download and install for me after I just answer a question. Do you want to install these packages? Because it'll say what other dependencies are required, how much disk space it's going to use, etc, etc. I say yes and then after it's done downloading in a matter of minutes it will be installed and it's all free. Um, before you do that though you want to do app get upgrade update and what that does is I'm going to control C out of this but what that does is it updates the sources list you know over time the packages that are up on the servers at, at Ubuntu or wherever you're getting your packages from even, from even in Debian those change over time time there may be a patch or they may have recompiled it for some reason because there's a newer version and so you want to make or they may add a new package that wasn't there before or remove a package that was there before for whatever reason they have uh, when you do this update of your sort of your list it, it'll the list of packages that are available to you will sync up with the list of packages that are actually on the server and then you'll be able to um, you won't get an error if you try to install something that is no longer there or you'll be able to see what packages are there that weren't there before. I'm going to stop now. This is going to take about an hour or so. When this hour is about up, I'll restart with my next video.